And it's Wellness Wednesday. So today we want to focus on the struggles teachers are dealing with and how they can cope with it all. Shelly Fan Fan, a name so nice you got to say it twice, is a mental health counselor and she's joining us now with more useful tactics for our educators. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Shelly, this is something that's close to my heart. My mother's an educator. My wife's an educator. I've been an educator and they have one of the most important jobs on the planet. But, you know, with the pandemic and all the school shootings, it seems like these teachers aren't catching a break right now. So talk about the mental health issues that could come up and they could be struggling with because of all these issues with them just trying to do their jobs. We are inundated with referrals from teachers. They are experiencing their own loss. They're experiencing grief as a result of the loss of loved ones, loss of peace, loss of lifestyle. They have to continue to show up for their students. They have to continue to show up for their family members. And in showing up and being present for their students, they also have to absorb just the weight of what the students are going through, their social isolation. And, and children have an amazing way of just carrying the issues within their homes. And so teachers are having to continue to show up with the pressures of assuring that the students are still performing. It is a lot and overwhelmed is not even the word. It's very, very hard to describe the mental health issues and the impact the demand on their lives is having in this time. And you know, many of these issues are out of their control. There's nothing they can do about it. It's just happening around them and every day can be different. So how can teachers mentally prepare for the dangers they have to face every single day. I know it involves a lot of prayer, but, but what else? And I'm so happy that you said that. I have a teacher that told me just yesterday that she was choked with her own lanyard mm. because young adolescents and children, they tend to use behavior as language and they're going through so much. Teachers have to have very healthy morning routines that will promote their mental wellness they should have evening routines that really lift up and, and undergird their mental wellness. Teachers have to take breaks whenever they are able to take a walk, get air, get sunlight, hydrate. It's important to have an opportunity to decompress, whether that decompression is mindful breathing, grounding, meditation, speaking to a loved one, and of course, therapy. I'm a huge advocate of therapy. Therapy will help you to engage your superpower. Mental health is a superpower. So it is important for teachers to be very intentional about their wellness and to not be afraid to get therapy, to get the support needed for them to be, to continue to be effective in their roles as teachers. Wow, there's no reason a teacher should have to put her life at risk just to be able to teach our children. But can you talk about how these issues can actually affect the work that teachers are trying to do in the class and the potential impact on the students because of it? When we start to decompose in our mental health and decompose in our emotions, it causes disturbances in our sleep. And when we are not having restful sleep, then our brains are not getting what they need. Brain cells die more than they multiply. And so that affects concentration. It affects focus. It affects the ability for any human being to operate in peak performance. We need rest. We need to be able to have a healthy appetite. And one of the things that I'm seeing as a psychotherapist is that teachers are not getting the rest that they need. Uh, it's, it's affecting their concentration, their focus, and they're becoming numb in their emotions. I had a teacher say, I'm getting to a point where I just don't care anymore. Mm. I had another teacher say during a, during a classroom that she was conducting virtually she could see the parents of one of the students literally engaging in a physical fight in the background and she's just so exhausted and feeling numb and so it is important to get adequate rest it's important to process those emotions and give yourself give yourselves i'm talking to all teachers the opportunity to really sit in your emotions but also process them and get the help that you need to get the coping mechanisms that will help you to overcome those challenges it's just so hard 
hard to believe some of the issues that you're saying these teachers have to deal with. No wonder they're not getting sleep. They're dealing with the depression, the anxiety, and everything that goes along with just going to work the next day. So what type of support is available for these teachers? Are there resources that the, the school provides that they should be taking advantage of? Even counselors are on hand to actually help them. It all depends on the areas that they serve in. Um, from what I'm hearing, most of the teachers that arrive at my office are basically feeling like they are unsupported. And so there are certain needs that we have that we just cannot outsource to others. And that, and one of those needs is attending to our mental wellness. And so going on to www.psychologytoday.com is a great place to start. It gives you an opportunity to put in your zip code, put in some of the issues that you are experiencing and a whole list of credentialed and vetted uh, professionals in the mental health field will come up. You have an opportunity to schedule consultations, speak to the individual, and choose someone that you feel comfortable with. But every teacher has the right to be well. Your mm -hmm. wellness is your right. You do not have to deal with not sleeping well. There is an answer for your emotional eating. There's an answer for your depression and your anxiety. You can bring the love and passion back for teaching. You just have to make sure that you are prioritizing your wellness, allowing your to be uncomfortable if that's the case to get the healing that you need so again www.psychologytoday.com is a great place to start so that a person can see all of the available licensed professionals in their area that they can align with now before you go we just have one more uh, piece of advice we only have a few seconds left i'm a parent and my kids know how to act in school they better but for other parents that are Every out parent there says that. i know right <laughs> <laughs> for other parents that are out there, what can we do? What can the students do to try to make life just a little bit easier for these teachers out there? Get engaged. I think it's important to get engaged, find out what's going on in the classroom, be open to when you hear feedback that doesn't align with your experience, you know, in the homes. But it's important to reach out, you know, a simple email just letting your child's teacher know how grateful you are the impact that they're having it will remind them of the impact that they have and see what happens often is that we go into a place that i call auto zone and you just do and do and do and do and do so sometimes that email that says thank you thank you for pouring out into my child is it, it will help someone to get out of that auto zone and just press the restart button on their passion, just knowing that what they're doing is not in vain. All right, great advice. And we can also help fight for raises for our teachers. That's another thing we could try to do. Vote that in. <sighs> so All right. good. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate that.